Hi everybody and welcome to the Hive Ultimate Half of the collaboration with Toby Fitness. We are in Wild Park today and we're going to be talking about throw and go moves. Over on Toby Fitness's channel you're going to hear more about the techniques and the kind of exercises you can do in the gym to get good and effective at doing throw and go moves. Over here we're talking more about how it applies to the game, the advantages that it gives you and how we're seeing it more in elite level ultimate these days. Gets it back. Simon Ramirez continues. Ramirez downfield. Colombians Tomas. looking very aggressive. Guerrero. The first advantage of the throw and go move is that you get open on your defender. The easiest time to get open is at the moment that you release the disc. And this is because when you've got the disc in your hands, the, the person marking you on force is by definition stood on the break side of you. Okay, so you're already free on the open side. All you have to do is release the disc as you're starting to accelerate, um, keep that momentum so that then the defender can't actually overtake you and stop you making a move to the open side. The best players in the world are able to throw and go onto the break side. You see it a lot with Valeria Cardenas, where she's being forced flick and she'll pivot out for an around backhand, follow that throw and get right around the defender, able to then get the disc flowing onto the break side. This is what often leads to scores. The second advantage that the throw and go move gives you is the initiative over your defender. Because you've already beaten them to the open side, they have to work hard to try and make up that ground and shut that out. So even if you don't get the disc back, it's going to be because the defender is committed to stopping that. And then that means you're able to beat them in the opposite direction. If you keep the initiative and keep that defender having to play catch up, then you can keep making dangerous moves, keep making threats, um, and always stay like one step ahead of that defender. What the throw and go does is it gives you that initiative immediately after you release the disc. Another advantage of the throw and go is the speed of release. It's much quicker to go from here to releasing your backhand there and then running than it is to actually pivot out and throw. So you get the disc out of your hands faster, which means that when you see the open option develop, you can get the disc traveling to that space quicker than if you do a pivot. This comes at a slight cost of accuracy and a slight cost of power, but this is normally cancelled out by the fact you're getting the disc out into the space early. We're seeing a lot of throw and go moves and a lot of half pivot backhands happening. Brian Jones pointed out in Discord recently, uh, he asked the question, how many backhands at the elite level do you think are thrown with the non-pivot foot off the ground versus on the ground? And if you watch elite level footage, Whenever there's a backhand, usually it's actually on like a half pivot. Yeah, either, either they're doing kind of Alex Atkins style high release like that, or they're pivoting out half and throwing it. Sometimes they'll continue that move, like Dylan Freechild is really good at throwing and running and trying to get the disc back. And the last thing I'm going to say about the throw and go is that it unlocks dribbling. If you're able to throw the disc, run out of your throw, get the disc back in your hands, you still have that initiative over the defender. If you're able to keep that initiative while the disc is in your hands, then you can go into dribbling mode, right? So if you keep the disc moving, either in a straight line so the defender can't catch up with you, or more likely catch the disc back, fake the defender out, and then go in an opposite direction, then you're dribbling, right? And you can shred the defense. It's really, really difficult to stop a player who is on fire dribbling with everybody bouncing the disc back to them, especially if they're surrounded by teammates who can also pick up the dribble. If they get marked out, say they get marked by two players, then whoever has the disc, they can then start dribbling, right? Every player should have that power to throw and go out with their passes, to get the disc back in their hands and to keep that offense flowing. This works well in any offense, but it works particularly well if the players are spread out. So once you bounce off one player or two players, then there's always going to be more connected players who are in really useful spaces. The mentality of wanting to move the dish really quickly, combined with the structure of a spread offense, combined with the technique of the throw and go, will lead to an offense which has got unbeatable flow. We're going to open up the around side and it is a goal. Now, if you want your team to all get on the same page with throw and go moves, you can teach them to throw on one leg to begin with. You can also run a bunch of drills of varying different complexities. Some of them can be really, really simple. If you want to see an archive of drills and exercises that I've come up with, then they're available on the training tier on our Hive Ultimate Patreon. If you want to make your own, then I highly recommend it as well. Try and get quick disc movement into those drills. Try and get 
changing of direction whilst the disc is in someone's hands. Head over to Toby Fitness's channel now for the other half. It's got the technique, the mechanics, the gym work you can do. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon.